How many of y'all followed Wall Street bets or the GameStop saga, where some investors turned a few thousand dollars into a few million dollars in just a few months? They didn't do this by straight up buying GME or Tesla shares. No, they used something called options and they bought puts or calls. But besides degenerate gambling, options can also be used for advanced strategies like hedging your portfolio during a bear market. That's cool and all, but did you know that you can also buy options for Bitcoin? This has not been around for that long and there's only a few platforms that offer them. But yes, you can definitely buy them and they're available to everyone, both in and out of the US. So in this video, I'm gonna start by explaining what options are, how they work, and why you might wanna trade them. Then I'll go Bitcoin specific, talk about what specific strategies you should consider using and on which platforms. So whether you are new to options completely or a pro but want to learn the intricacies of Bitcoin specific options, then this video was made just for you. Strap in my friend because it's time for the deep dive. Hey, welcome back to BFB. I'm your host, Kevin, and in this channel, we're all about that deep research and honest opinions to help you get that long-term edge in the crypto space. Now, I left timestamps down below so you can jump ahead if you don't need the general options refresher. And while you're watching, if you can give me that quick like, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, so what are options on a really high level? Well, they are the right to buy or sell a certain asset like a stock, commodity, or Bitcoin for a predetermined price for a limited time period. Essentially, you are making sure that you could buy or sell at a certain price on a preset date, regardless of what the asset price is at that time. And the price you pay for an options contract is called the premium. A call option is the right to buy at the chosen price, while a put option is the right to sell at the chosen price. Options are different from futures contracts because if you buy options, you can choose whether or not you want to exercise them. The person on the other side or the seller slash writer of the option has the obligation to deliver if you choose to exercise. Another really important difference is that futures contracts have unlimited upside or profit and unlimited downside or loss, which means you could actually owe money if things go the wrong way. Whereas if you buy options, you would only lose your paid premium if it expires worthless. On the other hand, if you sell or write options, it's the opposite. Limited profit, which is the premium that the buyer pays you for it, versus unlimited potential loss. So why would people even want to sell options? Well, let's just say that you can use it for some advanced strategies. Plus, most options writers bank on the fact that the vast majority of options expire worthless. When you buy a call or put option, your position is called either a long call or long put. These are our most basic strategies and there's a ton of other fancy ones like straddles, iron condors that I won't get into in this video. Different types of options have different payoff profiles like what you see in this graph. Basically your vertical up and down axis shows your potential profit or loss and the horizontal left to right axis denotes what the price of the asset is on the expiration date. So generally speaking for long calls, you want the asset price to go up and for long puts, you want the asset price to go down. There's a lot of math that goes into pricing options and it may sound like voodoo magic, but here's a few key factors that you gotta understand. Strike price is the price you agree to buy or sell at in the future. Spot price is the current market price of the underlying asset. Time to maturity is how much time left until the option expires. Implied volatility gets a little bit fancy, but essentially it measures how much the market expects the price of this asset to change in the future. And finally, risk-free rate represents the influence of interest rates. All of these factors contribute to the value of an option. Generally speaking, the premium for an option, that's the price someone would pay for it, goes up in value in these three cases. One, the higher the expected volatility, the higher the premium. Two, the longer time until expiration, the higher the premium. Three, the closer the spot price is to the strike price, the higher the premium. So buyers want the premium to go up after they buy the options contracts, while sellers want the premium to be high before they sell so the buyer will pay them more for the contracts. Options can be categorized as in the money or out of the money. When you're in the money, your options have 
intrinsic value. Here's an example of why that's true. In the case of call options, you are in the money if the current spot price of the asset is higher than the strike price, or that's the agreed upon price between you and the seller. Remember, call options are the right to buy at the strike price. So because your strike price is lower than the current market price, then you could just decide to execute your options, which means that the seller has to deliver that asset to you at the lower price. And then you can immediately sell it at the open market at its current price, which is remember, higher. That's why these are said to have intrinsic value because you can always exercise and flip to generate a profit. This is similar for put options, but in that case, you want the spot price to be lower than the strike price for those to be in the money. Here's a picture that could help you better understand what makes up the total price of an option. You're looking at an in the money call option. It has an intrinsic value of $6 because the spot price is above the strike price, but you also have an extrinsic value of $2, which is why this option is trading at $8, right? Six plus two equals eight. Extrinsic value is determined by the time left until expiration, and the implied volatility that I mentioned earlier. If an option is not in the money, then its entire value is derived from those extrinsic factors. So what does an options contract look like on exchange? Well, usually they are structured like this. First, whether it's a call or a put, then the expiration date, and then the strike price. Example is call, June 2021, $500, or put, August 2021, $500. There's usually a ton of different choices, like different combinations of strike prices, expiration dates, and each one has their own market. Some may have way more liquidity than others, which is good because we want premium prices to be more efficient. And this happens when there's a lot of liquidity. Usually these markets are grouped by their expiration dates, with calls on one side and puts on the other. They list out all the available strike prices and then the bid and ask prices for each option. There can be expiration dates in a few days, weeks, months, or even years. So you can imagine the plethora of choices available. So far, we've only talked about puts and calls, but by buying and selling a combination of them, you can craft some really fancy strategies with different payoff profiles that you see here. Some of them have crazy names like strangles, straddles, iron condors, butterflies. Yeah, there's some really advanced ones, but let's just stick to the basics for this video. Now, you might be wondering, in what situations do we really want to use options? Well, they could be a way to do leverage speculating because options contracts are cheap compared to the underlying asset. So you as a trader could control a larger position with options compared to owning the underlying asset directly. The only issue here is the expiration because if your option is out of the money at that time, then it's worth $0. Most sophisticated traders use options as more of a risk management tool, and you can build out various strategies that profit whether you expect a bull trend, a bear trend, a sideways market, or just general volatility regardless of the direction. For Bitcoin options, they're mostly the same as regular options, but depending on the platform that offers them, there may be some nuances when it comes to contract specs and different ways that they settle upon expiration. For example, in the stocks world, usually one options contract represents 100 of that particular stock. Whereas for Bitcoin, one contract could equal a fraction of a Bitcoin, like 0.01 BTC, for example. There are three specific option strategies that I think we as Bitcoin investors can utilize. A long call, a protective put, or a covered short call. A long call is easy, just buy a call option. You do this if you expect Bitcoin to go higher than the strike price plus the premium within a certain time period. The big advantage here is that you only have to pay a fraction of the price of an entire Bitcoin, but you can reap the profits as if you had a full Bitcoin straight up. That's the built-in leverage at work. Another benefit is if Bitcoin has a large dip in the short term, but still rallies in price before your expiration date, you could still make profits. Whereas if you were futures trading or margins trading, you could get liquidated or hit your stop loss level. So that means while your forecast was ultimately right, you'd still lose on the trade. The disadvantage of your long call option though, is that this price move has to happen before the expiration, or else you'll have to settle at a loss or just lose the entire premium that you paid. The second great strategy you can utilize are protective puts, but this time it's used to protect the value of your Bitcoin portfolio against market crashes. Here's how it works. You pay the premium for the option and it guarantees 
your right to sell your Bitcoin at the strike price, even if the market price is far below it until expiration. In this situation, if Bitcoin's price crashed hard, the maximum amount of money you'd lose is the premium you paid, but the rest of your Bitcoin's value is protected by the put. Now, if there's no market crash, the option expires worthless, but you only lose the premium paid and can still profit from the rest of your Bitcoin going even higher. Covered calls is the last popular strategy that you could consider. This is where you write or sell a call option and hold the Bitcoin that's required to deliver if the buyer decides to exercise. Remember, selling call options generally has unlimited risk because Bitcoin could go to the moon and then you'd have to buy the Bitcoin at whatever the market price is to deliver it to the buyer. But if you already hold that amount of spot Bitcoin, then you can deliver it if need be. That's why it's called a covered call. So what is this strategy good for, right? Well, if you think Bitcoin is gonna go down in price or trend sideways, or just not go as far as the strike price you are selling, then this could be an easy way for you to make money. If you're right, you would earn the premium while the option expires worthless for the buyer. Many experienced options traders use covered calls to earn consistent money this way. If any of these strategies sound like something you might use, then you can do so on platforms like Dirabit if you're outside the US and Ledger X if you're inside the US. There are some big differences though. For example, Ledger X settles contracts physically, which is just a fancy way of saying that you receive actual Bitcoin. Also, they do not automatically exercise your contracts even if they are in the money. You have to contact them to get them exercised. Whereas Dirabit is cash settled, which means you receive the USD equivalent instead of BTC. It is settled automatically though, without any action required from the trader. In Deribit, the contract size is one Bitcoin, but you can trade each contract in fractions. Whereas Ledger X, each contract has a size of 0.01 BTC, so 100 contracts equals one Bitcoin. Deribit order books are priced in BTC, whereas Ledger X in USD. If you're ready to go, here are some high level steps that you can expect when trading Bitcoin options on Ledger X. First, you deposit USD, then go look for the contract you want to buy. You can select the number of contracts, each representing the right to buy or sell 0.01 BTC. The premium that you see on the site is per 100 contracts. So if you just want to buy one contract, you take that number and divide it by 100 to see what you would pay. In the order form, you can see the bid, which is what the buyers are willing to pay, and the ask, which is what the sellers are offering. Since there's a wide spread on this relatively young platform, you might want to post a limit order to see if you can get a better price than just taking the best available one. Keep in mind that if you pick a strike price that's far away from the current price, those options tend to have a lower liquidity. You can tell this by looking at the stat called OI. This stands for open interest, which is the amount of contracts issued for that particular choice. The higher that number that is usually means that there's more liquidity available. You also want to be careful when choosing an expiration date because you'll need to either exercise, close it, or roll it over to a new contract with a later expiration date. Overall, there's not that many platforms available for us to choose from, and the markets there aren't super mature yet, so there could be a wide spread between bid and ask, which makes it hard to buy contracts at an optimal price, and also to close them at a favorable price too. Hopefully in the future, there's more liquidity on these platforms as they become more popular. So while we don't have any ideal places to trade Bitcoin options yet, I'm still going to play around with them so I can buy protective puts later on to protect my portfolio value during a bear market. Let me know if you have any experience with these or if you have any questions about what I just shared. Let me know down in the comments below. I hope this gives you a great foundation to start utilizing these instruments in a more responsible manner. I'm Kevin from BFB. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you all next time.